guys when i read what my annual pay will be my head became bigger in size <laughs> i was like oh my god um an instant millionaire when i divided what is like what i'll be earning in a month i was like oh my god this is huge holly you are a big girl <laughs> guys welcome back to my channel my name is Oliver Moneme and I live and work in the UK as a nurse if you are new here you're always welcome to this beautiful family and to all my returning subscribers you guys are the best so you already know what the topic of the day is I'll be talking about my expectations and realities of living in the UK you know of course most people why before they travel out they tend to have so much expectation okay because we are coming from a developing country to a developed country so we tend to have so much expectations and oftentimes all these expectations are not met okay and this is what i'm here to discuss now this video is not to discourage anyone trying to come abroad no not at all but to make you to know what the realities are and also to make you not to expect much from people living abroad because they, they too are struggling okay uh, i know that most people in, an Af in african countries will be like things are very hard that are struggling and they see people abroad as people that have it all like it's all rosy there it's not like that i mean it's not like that people here also struggle things are hard everywhere so most times just choose your own hard if you're privileged to travel abroad maybe you don't have a job where you are please do so i think the difference is that abroad at least you have a job you can take care of yourself and all your basic needs and still have some little savings left you might not have much to start giving out to maybe friends family around you know you may not have much you may not be extra buoyant enough to share out but at least in yourself you're comfortable especially for those living in this uk things are very hard bills are increasing there is high cost of living okay just stick around with me and i will break down everything for you maybe at the end of this video you will understand why i say do not expect so much from people living abroad because they too are struggling okay so yeah we'll dive straight into this video the first of my expectation is that when I come abroad um, I will earn more and yeah become a millionaire you know <laughs> I got my job while I was in Nigeria I took my IELTS exam nursing CBT exam and you know did everything while in Nigeria did my job interview I got a job and I was given an offer letter guys when I read what my annual pay will be my head became bigger in size <laughs> i was like oh my god um an instant millionaire when i divided what is like what i'll be earning in a month i was like oh my god this is huge holly you are a big girl you know i started saying that i'm just like an egg and i shouldn't break you know why in nigeria when i when i was preparing to come here you need to see the way i was carrying myself after i got my job i was like carry yourself gently because you know you are about to hit the money but what i did not think about is the bills i will pay when uh, when i receive the uh, uh, salary okay i forgot to think about the bills i was just looking at the salary so when i came here the reality slapped my face okay so yeah i will break it down what the monthly bill is like all right so yeah i'm married me and my husband we work as a nest and let's say we earn over two thousand plus in a month i will just use my salary to deduct the expenses and then you will see what is left but in reality paying bills is not meant for one person to pay it's not like in africa where you will be like the husband should pay all the bills it doesn't work like that here you have to share the bills because if one person end up paying the bills the person will be left with nothing okay so for the sake of this analysis i will use an estimate of what my salary is to deduct all these bills and you will see what i have left okay then i will kind of share the bills equally 
and you know give you guys overview of what we save at the end of paying the bills so that when we eventually give you something like if you have friends or family abroad who at least send you five thousand ten thousand naira appreciate it because it's not easy all right so let's say that um i'm being paid up to two thousand plus in a month before i receive my salary i will be taxed and guys i i they usually tax me up to 580 something pounds like my last salary i was taxed 582 pounds and let's just say that what i have left is around 1700 pounds okay so where we live is a two bedroom semi-detached house and the cost of paying the house rent monthly is 700 pounds guys if you're in nigeria just calculate 700 pounds by I think the exchange rate now is around 906 is up to 600 and something thousand naira this is what we pay here monthly this house is 700 from wherever you're watching me from do the calculation and see what is like what the bill is like for a two-bedroom semi-detached house okay and of course i live up north this is cheap here those living in london pay up to 1000 pounds for their house rent so if you minus 700 pounds from the one seven left is 1000 remaining right now from the 1000 you pay your energy bill energy bill includes electricity and gas and the cost of energy bill increased tremendously especially during this winter period do you know that we are paying up to 300 pounds every month for just electricity and over 100 pounds for gas so is like estimate of 450 pounds for energy alone monthly so my not sit from the 1000 remaining what do you have left 550 is what is left from that 550 you pay your insurance because i drive i have my own car around 70 pounds you pay the water bills around 30 to 40 pounds depending on the usage so my not that's 100 pounds my not sit from 550 remaining you have 450 pounds remaining right from there you have your tv license this one will pay like 150 per year so i'm not going to include it we have netflix we pay like um 10 to 15 pounds every month i will not include it we pay um council tax of about 100 to 150 pounds depending on your area so let's say we pay 100 pounds for council tax minus seat from it's 450 remaining um minus it from the 450 remaining you have 350 remaining yeah from that 350 what else do we pay for we pay for car um um road tax but i pay that every thing six months so i'm not going to include that some people pay for parking space you know there are some people that live in a place they don't have a car drive so they pay for parking space so i'm not going to include that because i don't pay for that we have a um, car drive area so let's assume that after this payment i have 350 there are other direct debits you have oh. let's assume that you have a phone your you have a new phone on contract and you're also paying for that every month okay so let's just say that you're paying 50 pounds for your contract phone or some other debit that's or some other contract that you must have signed that you're being debited for every month so let us assume i'm left with 300 pounds right so from that 300 pounds now i will now use it to um fuel my car for the month and buy things to eat in the house okay so because we are two me and my husband down we are working let me just share this bill so let's assume that at the end of the day we have like 800 800 pounds left because we share this bill so for that 800 pounds left we will bring five 500 pounds and save of course we are going to have savings if not what are you doing in this country so we bring out 500 and save and we are left with like three 300 right put that 300 300 together is like 600 left in this family pockets we use it and feed for the month, fuel the car, and let's just say that we ended up converting 150 pounds or 200 pounds to our local currency. 
I'm from Nigeria, so let's say that we converted 200 pounds and we have 400 pounds to take care of ourselves for the month. That 200 pounds is from there that we'll give to our parents every month because, yeah, we need to, we have to support them. So we give to our parents and we have like little left. We may just have like maybe 50,000 naira left. We are not even crediting our bank accounts in Nigeria. Maybe we have other family and friends that are asking for help and we end up sending them maybe 10,000, 5,000, 20,000. And you see some people still not appreciating that. They want you to break bank because you stay abroad. They want you to give them 50,000, 100,000, 200,000 without even realizing what the real reality is for us. Okay, it's not easy. You see that 400 remaining, you, you're using it to run around for the month. Mm? And that the other one that you converted is what you use to settle your parents for the month. So anything left that you give out, people you need to start to appreciate. If you're out there and you're hearing this, if you have friends and family that support you, no matter how little, learn to appreciate because it's not easy. Okay, so this is the reality for us here. But yeah. Um, I will still choose to stay here than go back to Nigeria because there is no work there. Okay, so I'm not discouraging anyone. If you find your, if you see any opportunity to travel out to Japan, please do so because the difference is that at least here you have a job and you can take care of yourself. But it's just that you may not be extra buoyant enough to share out to people or to meet out, um, to meet up with people's expectations of you because you are abroad. Okay, so yeah, that is the reality number one. So number two is hair. You know, yeah, um, before coming here, I know that um, breeding hair is expensive. So I'm not talking about that aspect, but I'm talking about human hairs, like getting human hairs. You know, because um, back in Nigeria, we were meant to understand that all these hairs are being imported. So I was like, yeah, maybe when I come here, it will become cheap. I will have access to lots of hairs. But the reverse is the case. If you go to Amazon, you will, you will mainly see synthetic ribbon. And when you even see the, the ones that look like real hairs, original hairs, they are quite expensive. So most of us here, we end up buying from Nigeria. Like I buy my hairs from Nigeria. This one I'm putting on is from Nigeria. And like I also buy my wigs from Nigeria. I don't buy them here because they are also expensive. Okay, so yeah, that, that is reality number two. Then number three is um, talking about their health system. It's true that it's free. Health system here is free. And yeah, for those on, for it's free for those on health worker visa they don't pay health surcharge but for those on student visa or other type of visa you already paid your health surcharge right so when you come here you assess health for free and yeah delivery everything is free these are the good side i will still talk about the good sides of staying in the uk but my the area where my expect expectation wasn't met is the delay in the health system guys you know i don't know maybe because it's free if it's not emergency, the emergency system is so fast. Like if you are in an emergency situation and call for ambulance, they will come immediately, okay, and take you to the hospital and you will be attended to. But if it's not an emergency situation, there was a time, I don't know what happened to my wrist. It was very painful, you know. Whenever I'm lifting, it's very painful. And as a nurse, as a nurse I do personal care to the patients that involve lifting. So I needed um, medical attention. I needed to know what's happening because I was taking parastamol and it wasn't easing of the pain. So I needed maybe some sort of x-ray or something. I rang my GP and um, they connected me to the physio team. When the physio called me, they gave me four months time appointments. Guys, can you, can you imagine? They gave me four months to come appointment in four months time. And even before one month, what was happening disappeared. So yeah, if something is not urgent health wise, the way they give you appointments here, they tend to shift it so far. There is this delay. So I didn't expect that there would be such a delay at all. Yeah, probably because I was expecting so much of them. Yeah, but it is what it is. So that is expectation number three. Um, expectation number four is the cost of 
child care, child support here. Um, to be honest, I didn't really think about child support at all before coming to the UK because um, I, did, I, I have no baby as at the time, so I never gave it a thought. But now that I have my child, child care is very expensive. When I asked around, it's like, 1200 pounds in a month so between 1001 to 1200 pounds in a month for child care you know here um education is free if your child turns three before september the child will be enrolled free the child will start schooling for free otherwise when the child turns four years okay um the child will start schooling for free but you know during this period of one year to that three years because we are working and it's not like we have family support here. So if you want to take your child for child support, it's around 1,001 to 1,200. If we pay that kind of money, we, we will obviously have nothing left, okay? And some people go for cheaper option, child minder, which is around 50 pounds per day. So let's say if you're working four times in a week, you're paying 200 pounds to the child minder in a week and at the end of the month's four weeks period you're paying 800 pounds for child support you see it's very expensive i i it's just one of the reality here okay but me and my husband we are just working around this we are just working around our um our working patterns if i'm working he stays at home and if he's working i stay at home but again we are also losing out on the hours we are expected to work too but yeah it's better off at least we are saving on child care by alternating our working patterns so i think it's still the best doing it that way than paying for child support the last but not the least reality that i faced is um not patient ratio here and working hours here okay the truth is that when i received my um offer letter i saw that nursing here is on a 12 hours shift like they do sh 12 hours shift in here you know back home we do um eight hours shift we run like three shifts in a day morning afternoon and night but here is 12 hours shift i start my work by 7 30 and i end by almost eight o'clock because i start my handover by 7 30 again in the evening so yeah um when i saw it on the job offer letter i was like okay i'm going to cope but eventually when i came here almost <laughs> it wasn't easy because for that 12 hours you would just be standing on your toes you only have one hour in divided doses for your break 15 minutes in the morning 30 minutes in the afternoon and 15 minutes in the evening time the rest you're basically standing on your toes working it's not like back home you know in nigeria now we have our nursing station whereby you sit down you know what to do you do that you come back and sit down it's not like that here yeah, you're basically on your toes for that 12 hours there is nothing like nursing station for you where to sit down it's only when you go for your break and talking about the nurse patient ratio ah we used to think that uh, those abroad, those nursing abroad, they only have um, only one patient, two patients, three patients, one nurse. That's how we used to see it then. We used to think that we are suffering, that we are not seeing big patients, and at the end of the day, we are being paid penny and all that. So when I came here, I realized that um, uh, my nursing ratio here is 8 to 11 patients, 8 to 12 patients that's it that's the reality i never thought that it would be that way but that is what it is eight to twelve patients only you and you it's just you and one hca so you would do your nursing job and alongside do personal care for this patient okay yeah so guys this is what the realities are for me so in conclusion um what i have to say is that if you have um anybody abroad any family and friends abroad and they're sending you something no matter how little it is please appreciate because it's not easy you've seen the breakdown i've given you um as regards to the bills and how uh, uh, what the salary is like and what the bill is like you've seen what is left at the, at the end of the day so if you have anyone supporting you 
appreciate it no matter how little it is okay and do not have so much expectations of those living abroad do not think that is so easy for them they too are struggling okay and do not have so much expectations coming over to the uk because your expectations may fail you but at the same time this is not to discourage you if you have plans of coming abroad of course i'll always encourage everyone to come abroad is is even best for you to come and witness and see what it's like okay all right guys um we've actually come to the end of this video and if you've watched up to this point you're yet to subscribe to my channel please subscribe to my channel hit that subscribe button okay um yeah um thank you guys for sticking around thank you for watching and just a reminder my birthday is coming up 3rd january and um it's my greatest wish for my channel to be monetized so please share share my videos like comment you know one thing that happened when you like a video and comment it sends notification to more people to see the video so please subscribe like share and comment i love you guys and i will see you in my next video take care bye, -bye.